The information provided in this program is of a general nature and is not intended to be personalized financial advice. We encourage you to seek appropriate advice from a qualified professional to suit your individual circumstances. Murray, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate your time. You're welcome. First question, will KiwiSaver make me rich? Uh, well, it certainly can. I mean, the, the, the beauty of KiwiSaver is that it's um, small but regular contributions over a long period of time add up. And, of course, you've got the benefit of your employer contributing as well if you're an employee, um, and you get a bit of money from the government. So that on top of the eighth wonder of the world, compound interest or compound returns from investments, if you're in the right fund, you're contributing regularly, you certainly can create a, a nice nest egg for retirement. And you know, if you take the example of someone who's 35, earning just the average wage of 55,000, let's say their current balance is 20,000, they're doing just the minimum 3%, and a balanced strategy getting a 6% return, if they just do that right through their working life to age 65, they'll have 600,000 or around about 600,000. If they want to take a little bit more risk, maybe a growth or an aggressive strategy or contribute more, then you're very quickly getting to 800, 900, a million dollars. And you know, for most people that would be, uh, they would um, consider themselves wealthy. Um, depends how you define wealth, but in a monetary term, yes. I mean, KiwiSaver can certainly uh, help you create wealth. Spanner in the works though, high inflation. How much is that eating away at people's contributions and how much do we actually need to put in in terms of contributions or make back in returns to even break even with inflation at or above 7%? Yeah, well, that's the key thing about being in the right fund uh, and, and being in a fund that's going to keep ahead of the pace of inflation. Now, obviously, markets have been a bit more jittery in the last 12 months. Returns haven't been as good. But again, looking through that, uh, a long-term investment strategy, for most people, a growth-type investment profile, and that's going to help you to stay ahead of inflation. Over time, inflation's not going to be at 7%. It might be at more like 2 or 3%. And so you need to make sure you're in a strategy that's going to produce returns that's going to stay ahead of inflation over time. The bigger issue we've got right now though with the inflation and cost of living crisis is that people are considering stopping or reducing their KiwiSaver contributions and that will have more damage actually. Um, if you stop your contributions and you know you don't, some people never restart them or you don't start them for a, a few years, that could have an impact of tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars by the time you get to age 65 because of the compounding effect. So you know, we would say to people, if you can avoid it, don't stop your contributions. Uh, keep them going on a regular basis. If you do stop, you're actually giving yourself a pay cut because remember, your boss won't be contributing uh, and you won't get the government or you may not get all of the government contribution. Um, and, and look, if you can manage okay with the cost of living and you do get a pay rise uh, due to inflation, then consider increasing your contribution. What is the ideal contribution rate? <laughs> Good question. Uh, You're going to say 12 or something, aren't you? It's going to break well, my heart. <laughs> well, uh, look, that's probably not far off it, actually, uh, if you look at the research. But, but really, there's, there's no one answer to this. There's no one size fits all. Uh, it's really personal. Um, and, and we would suggest that people get some advice or use some of the great tools and calculators that the providers have got on their websites or in their apps to work out, you know, what's your goal? Is it to purchase your first home or is it to save for retirement? How much do you need to contribute to reach that goal? How much can you afford to contribute? Uh, and work it out that way because uh, it's, it's going to be different for everybody. But the important thing is to just keep it going, contribute regularly over a long period of time and you'll end up with a nice nest egg for retirement. Do we need a higher contribution rate than we've currently got? Yeah, well, there's really lots of choice, you know, three, four, six, eight, ten. The, the problem we've got with KiwiSaver is, and it's fantastic there's so many people in it, but most people are only contributing 3%. Uh, and then you get your employer contribution, that's tax. So, you know, you're getting around about 5% contribution after tax. Most successful superannuation systems around the world and pension systems uh, have contribution rates of around 10% of individual earnings. And if we look at Australia, they've been at 9%, recently gone to 10.5, on their way to 12. The UK is at 10.5. So, you know, most experts would say, actually, you should be con contributing or saving sort of 10, maybe even 12% of your earnings over your working life uh, to create the nest egg that you need to really fund the type of retirement that you would really dream of, I guess, people dream of. So, I guess... 
Do we need more uh, contribution rates? There's already one at 10%. You can make con voluntary contributions, uh, but the key thing is to choose the right amount, what, what you can afford, keep doing it over a regular regular basis, um, and, and, and it'll, it'll add up over time. Should women have to contribute more? Because say they have children, take time out of the workforce, they're not contributing at all, neither is their employer. Should there be a special high rate that women have to take up? Yeah, look, this is a really important consideration and that's one that's uh, been discussed you know, in, the, in, in recent time. Um, <clears throat> stopping work uh, to raise children is a really important part of, uh, uh, of our social network and so social fabric. But uh, of course, if you stop work, you're not, well, you could still make voluntary contributions, but most employers are not contributing. So maybe there's a challenge here to employers, uh, contribute for your females or even males for that matter that are taking paternity leave. Um, or there has been um, discussion around perhaps sharing contributions where you know partners could be contributing together even when one of them's um, stopping to raise children. So some, some really important things as we mature and KiwiSaver to consider. Thanks so much for your time, Murray. Love to chat. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for watching Markets with Madison, the New Zealand Herald's show for interested investors. If you want to stay up to date with financial markets, click the subscribe button below and you can watch our other episodes here. Stay up to date with all the business news and numbers as they land on nzherald.co.nz.